The Chromo Paleo Show is back. Now, I'm sorry. Yes, this this is a different desk. My desk I would normally use is being used for an aquarium setup. So this isn't my normal desk, but this is gonna do for this video. Hang on. Oh, yeah. The last video. There we go. Now it's more like my normal desk. So the Chromo Paleo Show was actually scrapped, but after I checked back, it gained some attention, and some of you guys really wanted more content, so we're coming back to you today. So I'm gonna celebrate Chromo Paleo Show's return by creating a new mini-series, What If It Was Still Alive? In this episode, we're gonna focus on the largest snake that has ever lived, Titanoboa. Back in 2002, a geologist named Fabiani Herrera found something remarkable at Cerrojón, a coal mine in Colombia. What did he find? A fossilized leaf. This leaf is important because it showed scientists the potential for discoveries within the Cerrojón coal mine. A team of scientists gained permission to search Cerrojón for other fossils. The discovery of that leaf opened the gateway for the discovery of a lost ecosystem that existed just 10 million years after the K2 mass extinction which wiped out the dinosaurs. More early plant families were discovered including banana, avocado, and palm. These were tropical plants, which shows that 60 million years ago, Sarahon was a lush green rainforest. In fact, the layer of coal at Sarahon was formed by the ancient rainforest, because as we know, coal is formed by decaying plant matter over millions of years. Not just leaves, but the remains of animals were discovered, including ribs, vertebrae, and turtle shells. Meanwhile, in the lab, grad student Alex Hastings was sorting a box of fossils from Sarahon. He noticed all the vertebrae were labelled croc vert, which means crocodile vertebrae, even though a couple were very large and distinct, and he knew they weren't of croc origin. Later, they were confirmed to be from a giant snake. Before Titanoboa, the largest snake known was Gigantophus. It could grow to a length of 30 to 35 feet and could weigh 1,000 pounds. Titanoboa, on the other hand, had an estimated length of up to 42 feet and it could weigh 2,500 pounds. The fossil vertebrae from Titanoboa were compared to thousands of other species in a database of both living and extinct snakes. It was confirmed to be related to constrictors and pythons. Like today's anaconda, Titanoboa likely spent most of its life in and around water in the rainforests of Sarahon. Other species such as large crocodilians and turtles, which were potential prey items for Titanoboa, also shared this lush ecosystem. Because Titanoboa was a constrictor, it killed by wrapping its body around the victim and squeezing with unbelievable force. The green anaconda is the heaviest snake today, and it has a constricting power of 90 psi. This is the equivalent of being crushed by a 9,000 pound school bus. Titanoboa is estimated to constrict with 900 psi. This is said to be the equivalent of being crushed by one and a half Brooklyn bridges. Snakes are almost pure muscle. So, let's say Serahon was never a coal mine, but was still a lush green ancient rainforest. First things first, the native people of South America would most definitely have feared the Titanoboa. And the question is raised on whether or not they would reside in the Serahon rainforest. Perhaps they would move outside of Titanoboa's range. But if they decided to stay, there would probably be an annual death count, much like crocodiles have because many of those people fished the rainforests on small, unsteady, homemade canoes. Due to the weight of anacondas, they are very sluggish on land. With the weight of Titanoboa, I really don't think getting away would be an issue, so long as you're not in the water. I really doubt much would change, except for the increased risk when exploring the area. It would just be another predator in the food chain. So let's create a scenario. A zoological institute in Florida is housing Titanoboas. During a hurricane, the institute is destroyed and all the snakes escape. They end up spreading like wildfire around the Florida Everglades. Sound familiar? That's because back in 1992, this exact scenario happened during Hurricane Andrew. Unleashing Burmese pythons out into the Florida wilderness where they flourished. Now Florida's native wildlife is suffering due to this destructive snake. Sorry guys, I'm gonna have to get a chair, my knees are killing me. So I'm editing this and I never realised at the time that half my face was cut out through pretty much the whole rest of the video. Please ignore that and uh, there's nothing I can do to fix it. You're just going to have to look at the lovely pictures and gaze upon my mouth. So let's say Titanoboa has now littered the Florida landscape, residing in the lakes and rivers of the Everglades. Hunters would likely seek to destroy these massive invaders. Problem is, this is a 40 foot snake. It's not going to be easy. The potential for death during a Titanoboa hunt would be substantially more than a Burmese python hunt. Luckily for the hunters, Titanoboa would not be able to hide as effectively as Burmese pythons, making them easier to trap down. Even after the animal is killed, what is the hunters going to do with a 2,500 pound body? Well, you could either leave it for the scavengers or harvest the meat, and there's a lot of it. How it would taste is for another video, but the meat would have to be harvested there and then due to the sheer weight of the animal. Eventually, Titanoboas would be eradicated from the Florida Everglades. 
which is a good thing. However, we have now created a demand for the meat, assuming the meat is good. This is bad news for the titanoblore because now we're going to pillage their natural habitat and hunt them down. Obviously permits would be needed and laws would be put in place, but that's not going to stop poachers. Poachers would thrive off of titanoblore, not just harvesting the meat, but also the skin to make boots, handbags, belts, purses and more. Hopefully in this day and age, we would know not to drive them to extinction. So I'm sorry you didn't get the horror story you were looking for, but it really would just be another animal. So I doubt it would be very dangerous. As long as you're not out for a swim, you'd probably have more chance of arriving a titanoboa encounter than, say, a crocodile. It's like, if polar bears went extinct 2 million years ago, we'd be asking the same question. But really, we don't know it any different. They're here, and hopefully we won't have to imagine a world without them. So I hope you learned something from this video, and if you have any suggestions for a new video, hit me up in the comments down below, I'd love to hear your ideas. This has been the Chromo Paleo Show, and I'll see you in the next one. I'm going to focus on the largest snake that has ever... Come on. No. Leave the trilobite. No, leave the trilobite. Axel, go. Really?